Hello, greetings from the lab. I'm Jay Appel. This time we're going to show you how to use McAfee Drive Encryption, the very latest version that we have listed according to our master repository. According to our master repository is going to be version 728.4. Now in this demonstration, we're going to flip on over to uh, our virtual machine in order for us to be able to uh, capture using the McAfee Drive Encryption Advisor tool that I wrote a number of years ago. Uh, there aren't a lot of downloads of this. Uh, there, you know, there are some, but I think that a lot of people just don't know how it works, and that's what I'm gonna to try to show you here. There are unique circumstances where you really would like to know what's going on on the machine. Now, the next version will be version three, as I redesign the interface a little bit, but seven, uh, seven dot series works great here. It does use the Mac of the agent version five. So we're showing you on version 2.3. I don't expect the product to change a whole heck of a lot. If it does, we'll update the video. So over here, I have a number of different areas on the screen. In the upper left, we have the McAfee Drive encryption status. These are coming from the registry in parts. Some of them are from files to give you the best information about what is happening on the machine. Now, as you can see here, there is no drive encryption. This is a real time update. So the status display here on the upper right hand side allows you to pictorially through the dashboard, see different icons that will light up as it makes sense. Now I'm going to go over to my EPO server and I'm going to go to the system tree. And in my lab, I have it structured just like this. In fact, when I go to clients on site, I will have a tendency to set up a methodology that when I leave, they will have a diagnostic process in which they are able to drop machines selectively into the different categories and take those one-off machines and test them. On the EPO server, we have WRK1. And I moved it over here into phase one, deploy DE Go. Now let's head on over to WRK1. Here we see the Drive Encryption Advisor tool. Whenever I'm in the field, I find myself always going down here to the toolbar, going up to the status monitor, and then I would use the buttons that might make sense for me to use. Now I'm not going to use it here because I wanna show you that in the Advisor tool, in order to do a full communication, all you need to do right here is to click on the padlock. You never even have to bring the McAfee agent monitor up. Now, if you look real carefully here, as we start to get the DE go, it's going to install now, and we should see some status changes here in terms of what is installed. Is the DE go installed? That should turn green and it does. Great. I'm going to go back over to the EPO server and I'm going to close the status monitor here. Now I'm going to take this system and I'm going to drag it into the deploy the agent group. Now I'm going to head back over to WRK1 and I could click on the padlock again, but if I need to get the status monitor, since I always have hated going down here and right clicking and finding it, just go over here and click on the red M. And there you go. Let's click on that padlock again. And we should see that the agent, the second item here in this order, will then be installed and turn green. We begin to see that the upper left hand side, the drive encryption status information is going to start filling in. In this particular case, the agent is installed. We notice over here where it's located. And if you really needed to go over here to look further, you could even highlight 
this and copy paste and go over to the command prompt if you needed to. Okay, now what we're going to do is head back over to EPO. Locate the machine and now this is the reboot phase where we place it into the software folder and now the machine will begin to get software. How do we do that? We can either check for new policies or my favorite, we'll click on the padlock and let it do all the work for us. Here comes the software. And in a moment, we should see a reboot request because the software was installed. Our configuration is such that we're not turning encryption on. All we're doing is just loading the software. Now notice over here that the pre-boot authentication or theme that would be in where the pre-boot would be is now located where the padlock was. I always had an interest in knowing whether the theme got in place to the remote machine. And as you can see here, it's there. Now we're not talking about our policies here. We're looking at the machine in terms of at a glance, I can see here that the Ghost software was successful. The health of the machine is good. The drive encryption agent is true or installed along with the software. Over here on the right hand side, pre-boot is not active. Go is installed, the agent is installed, and the software is installed. And in back here, we have our restart message that this will auto close in 45 seconds. If we waited that out, it would be over here in the lower right hand side, but we're gonna go ahead and restart. Notice also before we do that, update succeeded to version 728. Here we go. We're going to log on in. And the next place we will arrive is on the desktop. Here's the tool, the Easy DE Advisor. And I'm going to right click here and just by force of habit, I'm going to run it as administrator. And when you execute it, it will read all the values. Now that the software is in place, the agent is in place, the DE Go is in place, everything looks pretty nice. We even give you a little snapshot of what the McAfee agent version 5 looks like on the machine. Now a couple of little hidden tidbits here that might not be obvious. If you went over here to Relay and you clicked on Relay, it actually shows you in EPO where you would find the setting. Click it again and it goes away. The same thing will hold true for the super agent or the peer-to-peer. -peer. The agent self-protection and then click anywhere else. So that is built in for those of you who are trying to figure out where things are located in EPO. Over here once again we click on the status monitor and there it is. All right, so what else is there to do? Well, how about if we encrypt the machine? Back over to EPO we go. And my phase four actually has a policy that will actually encrypt the machine. I'm gonna move this over to activate encryption. Now over here in WRK1, you will need to go down here. Go to quick settings, show drive encryption. This cannot programmatically be placed into the tool. Now you'll notice here it says 
no volume information, inactive. And we're really looking to get this into an active status. Let's click on the theme where the padlock used to be. This is the theme, that's what we call it, the McAfee Drive Encryption theme, over here in the little thumbnail. And we're gonna click on that. Now up here, now down here it says, creating event to request data for assigned users. A lot of folks will sit here and wait and see this message and then say, all right, why is it not doing anything? This is typically, now when you're not looking at it, this is typically an indication that it's created an event, it would like users, but it's going to wait until it's ready to send the information accordingly back to EPO to go get it. Well, let's help it along. We're going to use send events. And we'll see if we can change the status slide. It says searching available, detecting incompatible, creating the pre-boot file system. And that's what we're looking for here. So it's gonna create the pre-boot file system. There should be a machine key that is unique to this machine that will be sent up to EPO. We set the recovery key over to the key server. Committing activation. And you should notice that you're in active system state. And your volume status will begin to take a different form here. It just went active and now the machine is beginning to encrypt. How about that? Now, if we look over the screen here, we're finally getting to the end of the video where we're showing you how everything is filled in, who the user is, whether it's an Opal drive, what log level we might be at, the version. We, through color coding, for those of you who might be colorblind, I have information here on the left hand side for those of you who like pretty colors and status indicators at a glance you can look in the upper right hand side which is why i call it at a glance pre-boot authentication is active there's our theme here's a legend you have the log information and one thing left to show you down here in the lower left, I have something called click here to validate a user. And what we're going to do here is we're going to enter a user to see if it's been assigned to the machine. The user would be Batman. Well, if it failed to load the user, Batman's probably not here. Let's try it again. In fact, if I use option number two, I can use multiple names. So I'll say here, J Appel. J is not assigned. How about administrator? The user is assigned. Terrific. And you could do that with other users as well. That, my friends, is a tour of the Easy Drive Encryption Advisor version 2.3. I hope you have a terrific day. Enjoy the use of the tool. If you'd like to reach me, look online for my email right here and drop me an email and let me know how you like using the tool. Have a good day.